Yes, hello, I'm Ben. I'm going to be talking to you today about uh, my work on glue lamb beams and uh, a novel curved lamella approach. Um, I have an MSc in Innovative Structural Materials and I've worked for a few years a uh, small uh, structural engineering consultancy in South London before doing my PhD here at Bath. Um, so I'm sure many of you may be familiar with the um, statistic that uh, cement accounts for around 5% of global uh, emissions. And so if, if we want to uh, get to our, our net zero emissions by 2050 as an industry, then um, using, using timber is going to, be, going to be really important. Um, so it's a, it's a, a great material, um, glue lamb, where um, laminating process distributes the uh, imperfections throughout the beam. Um, and it's already used uh, a lot in industry but is often limited by its um, low stiffness. So often the applications are um, in structures where the imposed loadings are low, such as uh, roofs. Um, so my work is uh, looking at trying to improve the stiffness um, so that we can increase the uptake of the material within the, within the industry. Um, so timber is, uh, its structure is similar to that of uh, uh, a bundle of straws in that if you were to to uh, to crush it, um, it it'd be quite easy but if to, to pull it a, a, along its length and snap it would be would be much harder um, and this behavior with strength is the same with stiffness so as the angle of the wood grain increases um, its its stiffness drops off greatly so my work is looking at trying to uh, keep the stresses all aligned with the grain. So in a simply supported beam, we obviously have combined flexural and shear stresses, which create these principal stress lines, which curve th throughout, the, throughout the length of the beam. So by curving the laminations and aligning the grain to these principal stress paths, it's hoped that um, we can increase the stiffness of the material of the beam without uh, including any more material or um, other man-made materials. So I tried to make some beams. So um, first of all, I made a curved beam in a curved formwork. Um, which I then cut out a prismatic section from and cut in half and rotated relative, relative to one another and stuck back together. And so you can see here, I have a prismatic section beam, but the laminations within that beam are curved to try and mimic the uh, principal, stress, principal stresses that will be created within that beam. Um, so I then uh, tested these beams uh, in four-point bending in the labs. And so these are some of the results. Um, series one and series two are supposed to be uh, the um, straight laminated beams and series two being the curved laminated beams. So you can see I made four straight laminated beams and nine curved laminated beams. And the stiffness, uh, which was measured between 10% and 40% of F max for each of the tests. Um, so for the curved lamella beams, they had an improvement in stiffness of around 9%. So that was positive. Um, and to try and understand it, I did a little bit of analysis. Um, looking at the flexural rigidity of the beams. So um, all my slides are jumping around here. Hopefully we're on the right slide, slide 52. Um, so uh, again, series one should be the uh, experimental flexural rigidity, which was taking the um, modulus of elasticity according to 
BSEN408 and the uh, procedure from the experimental tests. Um, and comparing that with an analytical approach um, using the some data that I created from mechanically grading each of the lamellas that I put within the beams. So um, this is essentially comparing the experimental data with a transform section approach, looking at the, the stiffness of the beams. And so for the straight laminated beams, the sort of normal glue lam, the uh, predictions were quite accurate, but for my curved laminated beams, it, it was underpredicted. So I then uh, created a uh, an analytical model um, to try and understand this further. So I used a Timoshenko uh, beam approach. Um, as the um, the principal stresses are creating flexural stresses and shear stresses, so potentially the improvement seen may be due to the shear deflections that are created in timber beams. Um, well, in all beams, but uh, they're uh, more prevalent in timber beams. Um, and also. This model was to allow for a, a variation in uh, modulus of elasticity and modulus of rupture along the beam's length. This is obviously because the laminations are curving and therefore the grain angle is changing along the length of the beam. Um, and so using Hankinson's equation and substituting the grain angle into Hankinson's equation, you can get a plot there, a distribution of the modulus of elasticity along the length of the beam. And so I can then substitute that into my uh, model um, with one value at one end and one at the other. Obviously, the limitation of this model is that it's an, an approximation. Um, and I haven't uh, developed it enough yet to be able to So, so it's that, um, uh, and yeah, it doesn't. It seems to underpredict the results that I've I've seen in my testing. Um, so, yeah, essentially the. Also look at um, using um, re uh, reinforcing materials, um, as this is a way that the analysis I've, I've been developing an analysis which um, can calculate um, a variation in G because of the orientation of the reinforcement. So it's sort of um, perhaps taking things back a step to understand the mechanics of this type of beam. Um, and then perhaps being able to apply it to a um, curved laminated beam. Um, yeah, so that's that's my my work. Thank you for listening. Um, yeah, I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, right on time. A very interesting presentation, and I think a very you know worthwhile area with the you know, climate change, climate emergency being so so topical and. Uh, and questions always about use of use of cement and, and good alternatives. Uh, I'm going to go straight to Dennis, who uh, has a has a a burning question for you. So Dennis, if you unmute yourself, please ask away. Hi Ben, uh, thank you for the presentation. Hi. Just quick questions. What about the angle of curvature? Um, you clearly worked on a, a band laminated beam and a straight one. But have you actually worked on variations of the curvature? I'm sure that will have a significant effect, but I, I don't see, you, you know, you have actually gone into that um, aspect. Can you explain a little bit on that? Sure, yeah. Um, so for this uh, sort of initial uh, study, um, I wanted to keep the fabrication method straightforward. So I kept a constant radius to the curvature. 
and um and I didn't want to overstress the lamellas either so I kept the the it to that kind of uh radius to start with but um yeah with the this sort of a next uh, analytical uh, model that I'm developing um yeah you can you can vary the principal stress path that the uh, curvature will follow um and then yeah um seeing how that then influences the shear compared to the flexural deflections in the beam so bef before you have done any experiment have you actually you know sort of did any analytical work in terms of the optimum degree of curvatures or radius is ideal for you know in terms of maybe span to you know uh, curvature or some kind of uh, analytical models to suggest this is the optimum um, curvatures angles or you know well yeah for, for the initial study i um was just kind of looking at it um visually to to try and get a curve that would follow those um principal stress paths as like i showed in that picture with the overlay of the um uh curve lamellas over the principal stress path so I didn't create the um, analytical tool first. I did the experiments first and then created the sort of more detailed um, analytical model. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I was just going to follow up and say, have, have you looked uh, or considered whether, uh, uh, aside from principal stresses, uh, some more formal optimization methods to look at what the, the perfect so it's supposed to be perfect or ideal arrangement of of um I suppose fibers, you know, where a strong direction would, would be. Do you mean sort of like in a FRP beam or something? Well yeah, because in a sense, you know, if you've got an isotropic beam, you've got principal stresses, but as soon as you start putting mm -hmm. stiffness in different directions because you're curving your your lamellas, then then actually the principal stress patterns will change a bit. Um, I think. And you know, and actually the optimum in, isn't necessarily always following principal stresses, or you know it might be, but there's a there's a I think there's a bit of an open question there. I don't know if you've looked at that or mm. or, or thought about it more. Yeah, I yeah I tried yeah sort of looking a little bit to sort of the FRPs, um, but yeah I haven't found so much um, relative to uh, to beams. Um, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there is uh, some other work I've seen where they, you know, volume optimize and, um, yeah, can, you can shave bits of the, um, the section away. And so you kind of just have the material, you know, where it needs to be a bit more uh, at the mid span, you know, deeper at the mid span and shallower at the supports. Um, so there's definitely work like, like that that's gone on. Yeah. Um, but not so much um, in terms of, uh, grain angle. Okay, thanks. Uh, we'll go straight to Eleni. I think we just got time for one one last question. Uh, hi Ben. Um, I my I I think I have two questions. So my first one is, um, do you think uh, the difference between the straight and curved beams is basically uh, uh, material variability of uh, timber, uh, density variations, local defects? And the second question is, um, are you considering in the future to start the long-term effects? Because this is also a key consideration in design, uh, accounting for the uh, deformability factor uh, in the total stiffness and deflection of a timber beam. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Yeah, whether it's just the, the defects of the material um, and yeah, I mean, it is only a sort of marginal improvement I've got at this stage. Um, so, uh, yeah, it could be that it is just the material um, variation. But I think it was quite interesting with the just doing sort of the basic transform section analysis that they sort of were all underpredicted. Um, so I think it, there's certainly something interesting going on that's worth pursuing. Um, and, yeah, long-term effects... Um, that sort of wasn't in the scope of this project, but I think yeah, that I mean, you, you know, taking the the project further, then um, that will definitely be something that would need to be considered for sure. Yeah. Thanks, Eleni. Uh, 
thank you. If Matt, if your question is, is a quick one, or if you make it a quick one, then uh, we could probably just squeeze it in before we move on to the, the, the last presenter of the session. Yeah, it is nice and quick. Um, have you? I understand, obviously, that um, you know we're, we're getting an efficiency by by uh, uh, by bending the lamina in the in the timber here. Um, but have you? Did you do any work comparing the you know the efficiency of the kind of the material waste by cutting a prismatic section for a, a, a deformed one compared to using a plain section and getting the um, you know just using slightly more material to achieve the same stiffness? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's for this to sort of be taken in the industry and be an efficient, uh, a way of gaining an efficiency. I mean, I've spoken with um, some manufacturers and, um, you know, sort of spoke about um, you could sort of lay up a, a sort of 10 meter deep, let's say, or you know, in whatever deep beam you want it to be as a curved beam, and then just sort of mass produce, go along and, and make lots and lots of cuts to create the prismatic section so then you, you know you're not losing all that material for every single beam it would just be you know um you know you make 50 beams or whatever it is and you, you then use a little bit and then that can be it's timber so it can be um reused as yeah you know fire you know for, um yeah. other other industries you know it's it's never gone to waste and with timber um sure yeah, yeah. okay thank you 